Good afternoon, my name is Edison Cruz. I'm a faculty member of the University of the Philippines. I'm also the director of the Technology Management Center. Uh, my job as a director is to supervise the various programs of the center. I'm referring to the teaching, research, extension, and mentoring uh, programs of our institution. This afternoon, I want to talk to you about innovation and the university. Okay. Why innovation? Because innovation is very, very, very important. So the first half of my talk will be about innovation within the context of business, because private sector or business drives the innovation process. The second half of my talk will focus on innovation and the universities in general in the country. Why is that important? Because universities are also important players in our innovation ecosystem. So now we start with innovation. What is innovation? From an economic point of view, innovation is something new that brings benefits for an organization and for society. What are the major words or, or terms no, in that um, statement? Number one, something new, never seen before. It's a new experience, it's a, it's a new solution. Okay. Uh, it brings benefits. What does that mean? It takes away pain for the, for the customers. For the organization, there are benefits. Lower production costs, no? uh, easier um, production uh, pays. No? So those are the benefits for the business or the enterprise. Okay? Uh, elaborating further, the process of innovation uh, uh, results to translation of an idea or invention into a good or service that creates value for which customers will pay for, okay? So it's an idea or invention, okay? Um, will a new material result to a higher quality product, okay? Uh, take note that the materials to make the bodies of planes were also used to make arms, no? Weapons, rifles, why? Because these, these uh, materials are lighter weight but are more durable and therefore they will create better rifles for uh, soldiers okay um, create value you no? what does that mean okay um, for the companies it means greater profits no for customers as I, as I said earlier it means taking away the pain or in other in other words also uh, innovation are like vitamins okay it makes one more productive for example, no, um, we all know that financial uh, spreadsheets no, allow us to easily um, process numbers. I remember when I was in the undergrad, more than uh, three decades ago, no, when we do financial analysis, we have to use the, the, um, the paper, no, a 16-column journal. So it's very hard to really process numbers. But now with the computer and the appropriate financial software, um, you can easily um, compute for your balance sheet, for your, for your income statement, for your cash flow. Okay. And uh, it eliminates errors. No? Okay. So the computer cannot make an error in uh, computing sums, in division, in multiplication. Okay. Um, innovation is also called, uh, for an innovation to be successful, no? It must be replicable. It must be able to uh, serve the needs of a wide audience. No? Uh, so just imagine, um, in the case of Steve Jobs, no, when he was still alive, okay, he came up with the smartphone concept. No? His, iP his Apple iPhone is the first smartphone really that um, uh, catered to a wide audience. Okay? So, because it was able to satisfy a large need, it resulted to a large revenue for the company. So what are the manifestations of innovation? Okay. It can be new products and services to conquer new markets. No? It can be smarter cars. No? Uh, yung po mga coaching ngayon, they have sensors. So when you're backing up, it will tell you if uh, you, will, uh, you will crash to something at the back. No? Okay. There's also a camera at the dashboard. Therefore, you can park your car. No? If you're backing up, you can park your car in the appropriate spaces. No? 
we're asking walang camera, then you have to look uh, at the back no? and estimate the spaces. Innovation also manifests itself through improved products and services that stand out from the competition. Okay? Uh, before the smartphone, what do we have? No? We have separate devices for calling no? and texting, no? a separate device for listening for music, separate device for taking cameras, for searching the internet for information. Now with the smartphone, we can all do these things and more. Okay? Of course, there are complementary technologies. No? What I'm, uh, the internet is very important okay? uh, to facilitate mobility no? and the use of these smartphones. Innovation also may be manifested through improved internal processes to strengthen the company from inside or to save costs. Okay? Um, insurance companies, banking institutions, they have data about us. They have data about our expenses. No? Uh, so they know what we want to consume, what we spend on. And they can tell, they can communicate this data to advertising agencies, and the advertising agencies can uh, show us the appropriate ads no, in our cell phone. Innovation also uh, may mean development of a new business model. Uh, I'm referring to Airbnb and also to Amazon. Okay? Before Amazon, how do we buy books? No? You have to go to a department, to a um, brick and mortar uh, bookstore like National Bookstore. So you'll, you'll have uh, transportation costs. No? If there's a crowd in that store, well, you just have to bear with it. You have to line up. Okay? With the advent of Amazon, you can place your order via the internet. Uh, now you can also uh, receive books in uh, PDF format, no? so they will just stream to you uh, the books that, and items that you um, purchase. Okay? Airbnb. No? Okay. Before Airbnb, how do we select no? uh, accommodation? So you want to go to Rome, to Japan, or to Boracay. No? You have to book uh, your hotel. Okay? Now we know hotels are very, very expensive. No? Uh, for me, at least, it's... Um, uh, it's very expensive no, to book a hotel. So I would rather, so Airbnb is heaven sent. Airbnb, I probably spend only half no, of what I would uh, spend no, for a hotel. Now, how does Airbnb do it? Remember, who are the dominant uh, hotels? No? Okay. You, you have the intercontinental and, and what have you. Okay. Airbnb does not have a single hotel. And yet, it is dominating the hotel industry. Okay? Why? Because it has many partners. No? And the partners rent out um, a house or maybe just a room no? in their house. Okay? So what's the consumer experience like? You book via the internet. You pay via the internet. But the rate is very low. You go to the destination. Um, you are not treated like a guest. No? You are treated like a, a visitor. For some, they, don't, they might not like that experience. But if you are cost-conscious, then that's just OK. okay? Um, yeah. So there are a lot of innovations right now. No? Information technology has enabled, all, has enabled a lot of these innovations. So, uh, software, apps. No? Uh, if you are not good at... Um, uh, taking uh, pictures, there are apps that can manipulate your pictures, and those pictures will just turn out right. Okay? Social media. Social media is being relied on by the advertising uh, sector. Okay? Before social media, how do you advertise? You have TV, very expensive. Print, again, very expensive. The reach is very uh, wide, but you don't know if you are reaching your target segment. Social media enables you to have a very limited um, expense no? as far as advertising is concerned. And uh, there's a way to really target your promotions. In TMC, we don't advertise through the traditional media. We use Facebook. We can tell uh, Facebook that we want to target uh, the millennials, no? so those who are 24, years old to probably 35 years old. Those residing in the NCR, okay? Uh, 
we can't do anything about those living in the Visayas or Mindanao. No? I don't think they can attend the classes in Diliman. So we have a very targeted advertising program and we, and we pay Facebook only a few or a couple of thousand pesos. So a really big bang for a few thousand pesos. Uh, take note that before we used to uh, print, we used to use the printed media for, for our advertising and we pay about 40,000 pesos per issue. So really it's a big savings and the reach and the targetedness is very, very improved. Okay? Telecommunications. All of us have cell phones. All of us value mobility. You don't want to go back to your office in the late evening just to do an email. No? You can, of course, if you have desktop, the home, you can do that. But you can also do that, maybe send a, uh, a brief message via your, your phone. No? You can use the messenger or you can write a short email via your smartphone. Okay? So that's how telecommunications deliver more value. No? Whether you're a student, a faculty member, a manager, okay? biotechnology. No? Okay? Now, this is uh, a very. This field has some level of controversy. Okay? Um, I remember a European once told me that he prefers to eat an apple that has a worm in it. It means that there are no chemicals in that apple. Okay? Of course, the the European can afford. Um, uh, to eat that, that apple, no? he will not go hungry. Um, but what about the other, you know, other countries no? uh, who are not growing enough food? No? So biotechnology enables us to grow more food, but there's a danger no? of developing uh, cancer. No? So technology has, um, can have negative no? externalities. No? There are also a lot of innovations right now no? in the energy sector. Uh, we need more renewable energy. We need um, solar panels. No? Hopefully, the cost of, of uh, installing solar panels will go down. Remember earlier, I said that innovation for it to be successful, no? um, it should have wide application, a wide market. No? But of course, cost will always be a, a barrier. No? Therefore, the cost of developing and installing solar panels will have to go down so that there will be more widespread adoption of technology. Um, why various perspectives and examples. No? So innovation is very important for private enterprises. No? Uh, the arena is highly competitive. You look at smartphones, no? what do you see? There's Apple, there's Samsung, and there are Chinese uh, brands. No? Okay? Uh, so competition is there. Who will win? The one that delivers more value, the one that's more innovative. NGOs or non-government organizations also need to be uh, innovative. Okay? If they want to deliver value to their targeted uh, segment, no? then they, can also, they should also use um, technologies and innovation. So information technology can be used. No? Social media can be used, among others. No? Academic institutions also need to be more innovative. As we know, academic institutions have uh, several programs, no? teaching, research, extension, or public service. In teaching, we now have the distance learning. No? So in UP, we have the, open, the UP Open University. No? It is delivering um, distance learning. No? Um, here at the TMC, we have what we call the blended learning program. No? So in my case, 70% of my um, interaction with my students no, are face-to-face. -face, no? And then 30%, I use Facebook uh, for my interaction with my students. No? We cannot do away with the face-to-face -face interaction. No? Uh, students learn not only from their professors, not only from their materials, but also from their interaction with other students. No? So in TMC, in the Technology Management Center, we have um, students coming from a variety of um, industrial sectors. No? Some are in banking, some are in government, 
Some are in the fast food industry or the quick service industry. Some are in uh, uh, IT companies, no? um, among others. No? Also, in terms of experience, uh, it varies. No? The, the young guy probably has very little uh, business experience, but he is very technically sound and an expert in a certain technological field. No? Maybe biotechnology, maybe IT, uh, maybe in uh, pharmaceuticals. Now, the slightly old, the, the, the older students, 35 and above, no? uh, they may not be that technically competent, no? but they have the strategic business experience. No? Uh, because by now, uh, their job entails more of strategic management, deciding what markets to conquer, deciding how the product development should progress, deciding how much budget no? should be allocated for whatever innovation project. Okay? Government agencies also are now utilizing uh, innovation. Okay? So we have the government agency using social media to communicate with its, with its uh, stakeholders. No? It also uses a lot of information technology to process data and information. And hopefully this information will be used for better uh, programs. No? Why is innovation important? From a national perspective, there's a strong link no? between the level of technological innovation and the quality of living and national economic development. You look at South Korea, they are highly innovative and they enjoy a high quality of life. They also have a very high gross domestic product. Same for, camp, for countries like Japan, US, no? um, and other European countries. Economist Robert uh, Solo showed that the growth in GDP, or gross domestic product, was not solely on growth in labor and capital inputs, but technological changes as well. Technology and innovation has a strong correlation. Uh, when we talk about something new, a new service, a new product, usually it relies on a technological development. Okay? So technology can be both radical or incremental, slight improvement from the previous uh, version. Okay? So, so um, innovative, if a country has many innovative and competitive uh, companies, you can be sure that that country will also be quite prosperous. No? Why? Because these companies are able to generate a lot of em employment. They pay a lot of taxes. No? Therefore, wealth no? is created um, for many stakeholders. Okay. At the firm level, innovation is really very, very important. Okay. Companies that do not innovate will die. No? And we have seen that again and again. Okay. It is the companies that innovate that dominate their industry. So Apple and Samsung for communications. No? In social media, we have Facebook no? uh, and, and a few others. Okay? So innovation is very, very important. The, the consumers are very fickle. New trends keep on coming up. And um, companies everywhere have to have that market orientation. I'll get back to that idea of market orientation in, in the second half of my talk. Continuing further, um, globalization no, has increased the competitive pressures. No? Philippine companies cannot be complacent. No? They cannot say that we are only competing in the Philippine market and therefore we don't have to be innovative. The Philippine market will be invaded by foreign competitors. Thus, the Filipino um, company has no choice but to innovate and prepare for a globally competitive business arena. Okay. So far, we've been talking about innovation in the business arena. No? What about the government? Governments only also need to be more innovative. No? There's a high demand for services and solutions to a myriad of social problems. You have traffic, poverty, um, insufficient uh, infrastructure, no? education, malnutrition, peace and order, among others. No? Okay. Um, we know that the budget of the government is limited. Therefore, you have to deliver more value given the, the level of budget. How do you do that? Again, by innovation. 
So you have to use a lot of information technology. Why? Because IT enables innovation. IT enables um, gathering of data, the accurate data that will be used by decision makers. And if there's database solutions, database decisions, then the impact will be optimized. There are other stakeholders, of course, very important stakeholders, consumers, tayo, no? okay? We are consumers or customers. We want more value for our money. We want a higher quality of living. So if I spend about 40 or 50,000 for that phone, I want to know how that will make me more productive, okay? If I spend no, about 800,000 or more for a car, I want to know how, the, how that car will help me in my career. If I spend um, uh, several hundred thousand pesos for a solar panel, panel roof, no, I want to know if there will be sufficient return on my investment such that the cost of my energy consumption will go down in the long term. Other stakeholders are the employees. No? So employees that adapt innovation, need to find out if their productivity will increase. No? I think nobody among us wants to work harder. We want to work smarter. Okay? I've been talking about the importance of innovation. Now, let's talk about some types of innovation. We have product innovations. No? The iPod, which was uh, released in 2001. So portable players uh, had been around no? for many years before Apple launched its version in 2001. But what makes the iPod different? No? To, well, together with iPod, Apple iTunes software was the technology that really transformed the way people listen to music. Next one, we have Skype. No? Okay? I remember two decades ago when I had projects uh, in Europe or in other parts of Asia that there's a budget to travel no? uh, to other parts of, of, of the world. No? But with the development of Skype, the proponent and the sponsor will just tell me, Edison, you don't need to come to France or fly to, to Thailand or, Bang or Jakarta. No? We can just do Skype. No? Okay? So okay na rin po kasi nakakapagod din mag-travel. Uh, so Skype has transformed the way people communicate across borders. Okay? You can use Skype to communicate with a girlfriend, boyfriend, a wife, no, or a father overseas. Okay? But of course, now we have Facebook Live. No? So even better. Okay? Uh, next, uh, we have, of course, Facebook. Uh, what does Facebook do to us? It connects us. No? Now Facebook is also venturing into an online marketplace. No? You want to sell your old shoes or your old bag, you can sell that via Facebook. Okay? YouTube is also another major innovation. No? Uh, in my teachings, in my, in my uh, TM206 and TM251 courses, I use a lot of uh, YouTube videos. No? There are interviews of business leaders, innovation leaders, and their insights are very, very helpful in my class discussions. Okay? I remember my first smartphone. No? It was in 2011. I love the camera feature of that um, smartphone. No? Uh, before that, I cannot take a picture that I'm happy with. It's, it's always blurred. But with that smartphone, I can take pictures that are, uh, that are not blurred. Okay? So it's just a point and, point and click, and that's it. I have the picture I want. Okay? You also have, of course, uh, in the internet, you have a lot of online uh, shops and marketplaces. No? Um, again, these are major innovations. Whereas before, we have to go to the, the brick and mortar st store. Now we can just scan the internet. And then there are online communities for, for books, for clothes, for shoes. Okay? Operating systems. Uh, there are operating systems for, what, for our major gadgets, so whether they're phones, or their desktop. No? So these are major innovations because the operating systems are necessary no? for apps development. Applications are very important no? because it takes away the pain in our daily existence. We have apps for sending private messages. We have apps for taking pictures. We have apps for music, um, and so on and so forth. 
in any uh, business arena, there are dominant players. These are the large companies that uh, enjoy the large revenues. They are able to serve the bigger market. Okay. Uh, in the last two, three decades, we witnessed no, the ascension of what we call disruptors. No? They disrupted the industry, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. No? Okay. Uh, one such disruptor, to my mind, is Spotify. No? Okay. Spotify enables us to just pay and select the music that we want. No? We don't have to buy all the music in that selection. So Spotify empowered the consumer to choose and pay for only for the music that they prefer. Okay? 4G is also a very important innovation. No? As we know, there's a need for um, a faster internet, no? an internet that can process uh, more data. So nowadays, we're not uh, happy with just texting no? and calling on, and, and uh, audio data. No? We want to see videos. No? Uh, we even um, create our own content. No? So we film ourselves doing an activity and we, um, we stream it through maybe Facebook Live. Okay? So there's a need for internet that can um, process all this data and very quickly. So 4G is another, another major innovation. Now, um, it's not always the case of having cutting edge or rocket science. No? Sometimes you can win the day not because you have the, the best technology. Rather, you can have a technology that's not cutting edge, but you have the most innovative business model. So again, going back to Amazon, okay? it's one of the companies that are the first no, in developing an online market presence, no? and then the others follow suit. No? Airbnb is also another disruptor. It has a very innovative business model, and that's why it has disrupted the hotel industry. You don't need to have a thousand hotels scattered globally. You just have a thousand or more partners willing to rent out a room or the entire house. Okay? Uh, same with Grab and Uber. You don't need to have 5,000 taxis no, all over the world. No? You just have to have a community of uh, partners no, willing to be part of the system and willing to be part of Grab or Uber. We know now why innovation is very important. We know what is innovation. So how do you, we manage innovation? Okay? Number one, there's a need for strategic direction. The top guy should be the champion of innovation. The top guy should say that innovation is very important. Otherwise, we will not be in existence maybe five years from now. I remember uh, Manny V. Pangilinan. Okay? For one, he has redefined the DNA of his companies. No? For him, Meralco is not anymore an energy company. It is a technology company. Manny Pangilinan, according to an interview, uh, which I, um, I, I, I access, no? he said that uh, what keeps him awake at night is, is the fact that all these companies are approaching the mature industry. Okay? How do you manage innovation? Number one, there's a need for strategic direction. There's a need for a champion. Top management should value innovation. Top management should set the, the, the path no? towards how the company will manage innovation. For example, Mani V. Pangilinan, okay? he has several companies no, under uh, a conglomerate. Okay? He realizes that his conglomeration uh, are composed now of companies that are in mature industries. No? So now they're still making money, no? but in 10 years' time, who knows, no? they might die a natural death unless no, they re revitalize uh, the, the companies and are become more innovative. Meralco, I believe in, in uh, MVP's mind, is not anymore a, an energy company. He said that he considers it as a technology company and therefore they have to be nimble. They have to be prepared to innovate. Sometimes they have to unlearn no? or do away with what worked in the past. No? They have to do away with certain competencies that served them well in the past and develop new competencies, okay? So, innovation is also a mindset, okay? 
what worked in the past might not work anymore in the future. You have to embrace change. You have to embrace uncertainty. And you have to be agile. If something doesn't work, then you have to change direction. By the way, IBM in the 1990s, uh, they almost closed shop. They almost became bankrupt. Why? No? Their traditional businesses, no, the hardware is not anymore generating revenues. No? You have Chinese manufacturers no, producing lower cost laptops and IBM simply cannot compete with them. So what did IBM do? It had to sell off its hardware business. No? It had to unlearn uh, that particular competency because it does not work for them anymore. So IBM re-engineered themselves. No? In 1990s, they told themselves that we are not anymore um, a computer company, okay? We are now a solutions company. We will now highlight our competencies in generating new knowledge, in integrating solutions that cover not only hardware, but also software and, um, and the talent from our people. Okay. Um, next, when you manage innovation, you have to be prepared no, to invest in R&D. Okay. You have to be prepared in generating new knowledge. You have to be prepared in developing new products and processes. No? And that means money. If companies view R&D as an expense, no? then they will, they will probably require um, short-term return on investment. And if they do not generate us that, they will be disappointed. So I think companies investing in R&D should be in there for the long haul, okay? R&D is not a necessary expense. It is an investment. Also, companies should be prepared to collaborate, okay? I remember one time, uh, Steve Jobs, no? when he was uh, meeting with these people, no? Steve Jobs liked to uh, have you know, a, a fancy meeting with him on the stage and all the Apple employees in, in front, no? okay? And then he showed on the screen his newest collaborator. And, and guess who that was? It was Bill Gates, the arch enemy of Apple. Okay? In my mind, I think Bill Jobs recognized that Apple cannot do it alone. It has to have collaborators. No? Also, in the mind of Bill Gates, he knew that Steve Jobs had the design competence. Uh, Microsoft dominated the business. It generated a lot of revenues. It earned a lot more money than, than uh, Apple, but it does not have the design genius of a Steve Jobs. Therefore, there was, a, uh, there was a rationale for that collaboration, and it was a successful collaboration. Next item, protection of intellectual property. You are generating new knowledge, new, new designs, innovative products. You have to protect that intellectual property. Patents, no? copyright. In the management of innovation, there's a clear need to protect the intellectual property arising from these R&D activities. Okay? Uh, protection of intellectual property will allow the company that invested in that R&D to exploit no? the uh, commercial potential of the R&D outputs. No? If the company doesn't have the knowledge or the competency no? to protect IP resulting from its R&D investments, then what will happen is probably another company will exploit uh, the fruits of their labor, or worse, another country no, uh, will be able to exploit the IP arising from uh, the R&D investment of that company or that country. Okay. There are now uh, conversations going on no, wherein China is being accused no, of uh, fueling their economic development via the intellectual property uh, generated by American and European countries. Uh, we will know for sure what's the truth behind it in probably in the next uh, five to ten years. Okay? The management of innovation also entails that there should be a process for managing new product development. So there are various stages no? from idea and idea generation, idea selection, testing the business concept until launching no, the new product or even a new enterprise. So all these activities 
at various phases should be managed. Okay? I'm reminded about the development of the Samsung two-view camera. Okay? So Samsung realized that as far as cameras are concerned, initially they were not doing very, very well. Okay? The dominant players, you have Canon, you have uh, Nikon or Nikon. Okay? Uh, Samsung, they don't have brand recall at that time. Okay? But if you take away the branding and you just compare the technical features, Samsung camera fares equally well vis-a-vis no, -vis the competitors. So how do you explain that Samsung is uh, in the 11th spot no, as, as far as market share is concerned? Okay? So Samsung did some market uh, study. They realized that maybe the market doesn't need another high-tech uh, phone, no, but rather a phone that can be suited to their changing lifestyle. Okay? So Samsung realized no, from the market study that people want to take pictures of themselves. Okay? Uh, and they have fun doing that. No? They, they want to take pictures of themselves, no? drinking or uh, tending their garden, etc., whatever. Okay? So as a result of, that, of the insight from that market study, Samsung developed a camera that will allow you to take pictures of yourself. Okay? So it's not about technical innovation. It's about supporting a particular lifestyle of your target market. Okay? Same with Nintendo Wii. No? Okay? Nintendo Wii is a poor follower compared to Sony as far as game consoles are concerned. So Sony is for the hardcore gamer. The hardcore gamer, it wants a, an environment that's very realistic. I remember watching my son's uh, God of War games no, in his laptop, and the protagonist will fight, no? and one warrior will cut off the head of the other uh, warrior, and you see blood no, spilling all over, and then the sounds are very, very realistic. And then I think real actors no, uh, uh, you know, are part of that uh, game. Okay? So Nintendo Wii is now faced with a dilemma. How do you compete with, some, with uh, Sony? Okay. Uh, Nintendo we decided we will not compete in the same game, in the same manner of Sony. Nintendo we will com uh, compete differently. How will it do that? No? Not by coming up with high-definition games, not by employing Hollywood actors, no? Uh, lending their voices to the game, no? Uh, they, Nintendo will decide that they will target a separate market segment. Not the hardcore gamer, but a separate market segment. So who are these? These are the non-gamers. No? These are the titos and titas, and even the daddies and the mommies, okay? So ano ba ang gustong gawin ng mga uh, daddy at mommy, no? These are older guys older women, katulad ko, no? they, they cannot follow the hardcore game. Mayihilo kami, okay? But we will have value in playing a computer game that allows us to also exercise at the same time. So Nintendo Wii has computer games that will simulate a tennis match or a baseball match, no? Uh, or another sport, no? So, so because of that, Nintendo Wii was able to make money not by being more like Sony, but by being different from Sony, by competing differently, and eyeing a different market segment. So there's a, there's a lesson there, no? Uh, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Wii uh, asked, them, asked the, the non-consumer, why are you not playing games, no? And then what will compel you to try playing games? So the non-gamer, the older people said that, well, uh, if it allows us to do exercise, no, then probably we'll consider it. And uh, that's how Nintendo Wii was able to uh, generate revenues. Okay. We now go to the second half of my talk, no? innovation and Philippine universities. Okay. Uh, is innovation also very important for the academic uh, community? The answer to that is yes. And, very, and uh, it's very, very important. Why? Okay. 
uh, innovations have been introduced in the various programs of the university. I'm talking about teaching, research, and extension. But before we go into detail no, on innovation and its role in the university, I'd like to mention no, that while business drives, drives the innovation process, no, there are other key players in what I call the innovation ecosystem. So aside from business, you have the government, uh, the banking sector, among others. Okay? So for government, we know now that the Department of Science and Technology uh, sets the policies no, for R&D in the Philippines. No? As such, they can allocate financial resources no, to further develop a particular sector. They invested a lot in, space, in the space R&D. They are now investing also a lot in developing technology startups. No? They invested more than half a million no? uh, for the operation of technology business incubators. No? They want uh, about 500 to 1,000 startups no? uh, among the country in the next two years. Okay? That will really uh, make us more technology uh, innovative and entrepreneurially, entrepre entrepreneurially minded. Okay? So in the ecosystem, you have the business sector, you have the government, you have the academe. No? The academe also is very important. Why? Because we train engineers, we train scientists. Okay? But sad to say, I think that Philippine universities right now no, are into adoption of technology, but we're not really actively participating in the generation of innovations. I would like to clarify that academes, the, academe, um, the academic community produces a lot of research, no? and we have seen the increase in research publications, especially in UP. No? But publications do not equal innovations. No? So when you have a publication, you increase the amount of knowledge, no? but it does not result automatically to new products and new process. It does not result to uh, more revenues no, for companies. No? And there lies the, the problem. And I would like to um, expound on it in a little while. Okay? But for now, um, let me just discuss to you no, how, wh what are the innovations that are being adopted no, by uh, the universities. No? Of course, in teaching, we now have more digital content no, coming from the social media. Okay? We have interviews uh, that are recorded and we can show it in class. Okay? Uh, if you're a PhD student, uh, you won't feel bad if you were not supervised by a legendary uh, doctoral faculty of Harvard or MIT because chances are there are interviews of, of these uh, prestigious uh, uh, faculty members that you can access via YouTube. Okay? We also have, I, I mentioned earlier, distance learning. No? So UP, UP Open U um, offers the program for distance learning. So the combination of all these programs, online schools, blended learning, open educational resources like our very own TVUP, no? and the use of digital resources all add up to more innovative teaching practices. Also, uh, in our research, several uh, technological innovations have, already, have also been adopted. Okay? Uh, software, of course, software, we have that um, since the 60s. I'm referring to the SPSS. No? But this statistical, statistical software has, been, has become more powerful no? such that it can now um, analyze a lot more qualitative data. Lastly, the third um, major program of the university are the extension or public service programs. No? Again, you use a lot of, we use a lot of IT and social media uh, to make our services no? uh, better and better to support the needs of our targeted stakeholders. I now go back again to my thesis. No? Philippine universities, like UP, no? are adapting innovations in our key functions, no? research, extension, teaching. Okay? But are we generating innovations? 
MIT, Stanford, they are able to generate revenues from their R&D outputs. No? I'm referring to their patents. So they're able to sell patents. No? This means revenue that's flowed back to their uh, R&D efforts. They're able to generate licensing revenues. Again, this means uh, return on investment no? on their R&D budget. Okay? University of the Philippines, I think we already have spent no, billions in R&D no, in the last decade for research. No? Um, we have a lot of publications, and that's good because it has uh, elevated our ranks no, uh, among the best in universities globally. Okay? But are we able to generate private return on investment in our R&D? I do not question that we're able to generate social returns on investment. We have better students, better faculty members. We have uh, generated new knowledge that benefited mankind. But that's mankind. Uh, what are we doing for our private sector, for our businesses? No? I argue that we also have to help them become more innovative. They generate wealth. They pay taxes. They hire people. So employment is very important for us. No? Um, please note that other countries, they value, uh, they value the fact that university R&D no? are exploited by their own private sector. So Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, no? they make sure that R&D produced by their universities are commercialized as products and processed. No? Uh, in Vietnam, when you, when, you, uh, when you are called an engineer, chances are your mindset is, I will create my own technology, and going up a step further, I will create a business wherein that technology of mine is the, um, is the major source of products and process. So that's how they think. No? Advanced po sila mag -isip, okay? I would like to see the day when our own engineers, UP engineers, no, uh, are focused on developing, inventing technologies no, that will be the cornerstone of a future tech startup that they will head. And that there will be continuous innovation so that we will have our local Bill Gates, no, our local Google, our local Airbnb, our local version of Grab and Uber. Okay? So Vietnam, our Vietnam, China has turned up a lot of engineers with that kind of mindset. Actually, China has developed uh, dramatically in the last 30 years. No? Why? Because of entrepreneurship. So a lot of Chinese started setting up their own companies. Of course, they know how to manage the innovation process, how to select, evaluate, and adapt technologies, and then develop the right business model. In some instances, they are not original. They just copy. And that served them well also, because the Chinese market is a very, very big market. You can get rich just by serving the billion uh, Chinese. No? You don't even have to compete outside of China. And that's how uh, Alibaba no? uh, grew. No? Okay. I remember uh, reading an interview of Jack Ma. He said that he's not interested in becoming the shark no? that owns the, the seas. No? He's already very happy domin uh, becoming the, the dominant um, player in the Yangtze River okay? because the Chinese market is very, very big. Okay? Uh, there was talk before that, Chinese entrepreneurs do not need uh, markets outside of China. No? They can grow rich and powerful just by serving the Chinese market. Okay? Um, now, moving forward, no? factors that um, facilitate a culture of innovation okay? are those present no? in the University of the Philippines. Okay? Top management attention. We have champions in teaching. We have uh, champions uh, espousing quality uh, teaching. Okay? We have uh, faculty members 
that are checking the quality of teaching. We have also champions no, espousing research productivity. We also have champions espousing uh, extension. Okay? But do we have a champion espousing innovation in the university? Again, I go back to my definition of innovation. It has to be a new solution introduced to the market. And the market will appreciate it such that they will pay for it. So are our technologies being bought no? and paid for by the industry who will now supposedly turn it into new products and processes? Okay. I think uh, we need to do a better job. No? There needs to be a champion focusing only on innovation. That will entail commercialization of technologies developed by the UP faculty, scientists, and engineers. Okay? I would like to see a more vibrant technology commercialization activity in the university. If we can generate more resources, financial resources from our technologies, then we do not have to increase uh, tuition fees. Okay? We can rely on our other assets. There's also a need to change the mindset and the culture of the University of the Philippines faculty. Okay? I, I'm not saying that we go away from, from uh, our academic uh, disciplines, but we have to be more imaginative and creative in how we can uh, transfer our technologies. No? There should be also compensation for innovation. In other universities, you have faculty members who are teaching in the university, so they are full-time in the universities, but they are also maybe vice president of the R&D department of a corporation. What are the benefits of that type of arrangement? For the faculty, he enjoys the best of both worlds. The academic environment generating new knowledge, the corporate environment, new knowledge is deployed in terms of new products and new processes. Okay. And you also validate no, whether a certain product or process is really valued uh, by, the, by the industry. There's also a need for market orientation no, among the um, professors, no, scientists, and engineers. No. How is this manifested? Scientists, when they craft their research agenda, they also have to get the voice no, of the user of that technology. Now, who are the users? Who are the potential users? It's the industry. So at the onset, you ask the industry, what kind of technological know-how do you need no, to make your company more competitive? Okay. What kind of R&D in terms of materials would you want us to focus on? Okay. What kind of product development would be valuable to you? I'm now coming to the last part of my second, uh, the second half of my uh, talk, no? and I would like to put forth this call to action. So I think the university, in the university, there's a need for development of an innovation strategy. There's a need to plan our innovation activities. No? Um, there's a need to prioritize no? which technological sectors should we focus our R&D in. And also, um, we should not be content of publication, but we should encourage our faculty members to apply for patents, for, up for intellectual property protection, and also for mechanisms to uh, transfer this technology. I am aware that the OVCRD has already an organization um, tasked no, with uh, facilitating the commercializing of our technological outputs. That is a step in the right direction. But take note that if we cannot change the mindset of our scientists and engineers, then the, that particular OBCRD unit will have no technologies to work with. Okay? So first of all, there's a need for an innovation strategy and also a need to change the culture within the university vis-a-vis -vis our R&D systems. Okay? Aside from having that organization, we have to further fine-tune the process of technological innovation and technology commercialization in the universities. 
we should have a better framework for um, selecting ideas no? to develop and to further develop and, and, um, co and commercialize. No? Also, we should have a better innovation process for transforming an idea into a successful innovation, concept development, business plan, solution development, prototyping, implementation, and marketing. Again, I go back to our culture. So we should, we should change the mindset. No? We should design an innovation culture that promotes innovation. In uh, Taiwanese uh, universities, no? of course, they also idolize the athletes. No? But surprisingly, they also idolize the innovators among the young people. They have posters no? in the campuses. Uh, I remember when I go to Ateneo, they have posters hung, hanging on their trees. No? And the posters show their uh, basketball heroes, their track and field heroes. No? In Taiwan, aside from idolizing their athletes, they also uh, idolize their innovation uh, heroes among the students. So I guess we have to do, we have to, uh, do that too. No? We have to consider as rock stars, not only those who can sing and dance, not only those who can uh, play basketball, but also those who can set up companies uh, who can commercialize technologies. Okay? In closing, I would like to summarize my talk. No? Innovation means developing something new that will be translated into better solutions that the customers will pay for. Businesses drive the innovation process, but the academe also has a very important role to play. In the university, we develop technologies. No? We do R&D. We should not stop at just publication. We should have a different mindset. How can our research be translated into new products and new process? No? We have to work with the businesses. Okay? Uh, we have to uh, collaborate further no? with the private sector. In that way, we can have a more innovative University of the Philippines. Thank you.